Oh. Hi, I'm Jimmy Porter and welcome to Stewart Arts. Uh, in this video, I'm going to be working on this 1885 Gustav Becker wall clock. It belongs to a friend and he brought it by to see if I thought we could get it running. I don't think it had run for many years, possibly decades. Uh, this clock uh, was made in 1885. Uh, it was serial number 784,000. So it's a lot of clocks were made by this company. It's a very well regarded company. So I really wanted to do a nice job. So this video uh, is separated into two parts. I've got one part that deals with the movement. I'll take that apart, service it, and get it back uh, in place and running. And in the second video, I uh, will address the woodworking issues that the cabinet had. We were missing all the finials, uh, the, uh, what I call the gingerbread on the top here, and uh, some of the uh, uh, trim pieces were missing as well. So we're going to refinish the cabinet and get that back together. So I hope you'll watch both parts of the video and I will include uh, links to the other video and each of the video in the notes. So thanks for watching. So just right off the bat, we can tell by looking at it that um, it has uh, a lot of uh, uh, damage to the cabinet. There's uh, places where the finish is rubbed off. Uh, some of the wood is warped. I see some chips. Uh, we're missing the gingerbread that should be on the top and also the finials and there is some trim that should go on the bottom here. So we'll make those parts. I wound it up when I first set it uh, up and I was able to get a wind on the time side. It was pretty well wound down which is a good sign because it means it probably ran until the spring was fully discharged. Uh, but on this side uh, the spring is there's no tension, so I think that the spring is possibly broken on the inside of the barrel or possibly uh, just off of its peg. So we'll take that out and have a look at it. So what I love about this clock so far is uh, the fittings on the case are very ornate. It, these brass fittings, even though they're behind the, the movement, you can't see them, they've got some decoration on them, so that's really kind of interesting. And an interesting thing about this clock is that the pendulum actually is suspended in the back plane of the case and the crutch drives it from the movement. So that's the first time I've seen that in a clock. I'm sure it's quite common, but it's the first time I've seen it. I really love these threaded screws. Uh, they're really cool. Very fine thread there. It's a brass head on these. I love this. This is way better than the other systems I've seen for this. I don't know if that's totally unique to this maker or not. Sure makes it a lot easier to get this thing apart. Aren't those cool? All right. I've had a good look at the uh, movement and put it through its paces here. And uh, I'm going to say that the pivots uh, and bushings are pretty solid. I don't really think there's excessive slop there. The gears seem to travel nicely. The only problem I've found so far is that uh, this is the time side and this is the strike side. And the strike side is not taking a wind here. So you see that should be uh, increasing resistance. Uh, but I think that the spring inside this little can is off its peg or broken. So we're going to have to go into that. So I'm letting down uh, the mainspring side on the, the time train to get all the pressure off because the plates are going to have to come apart. So that, that'll require me to do a good cleaning of all the gears before I put everything back together. Put down a towel. This will prevent these small parts from bouncing all over the place if they should fall. Something you learn the hard way.
With the verge and crutch removed, I can exercise the time train here uh, just by uh, pretending like I'm winding it and I can see it operates pretty smoothly. There's one gear that has a bit of a wobble to it. Not sure I need to do anything with it, uh, but I can see enough here to see that the time train seems to be functioning fairly well. All right, so the back plate's coming off here. Got to be done. That's the only way to get to the spring cans. And I wonder as I'm doing this uh, when the last time this happened was probably a very long time ago, if ever. I see a little evidence that this clock has been worked on. Uh, these bushings, they may be a repair from years gone by. And there's just little tool marks here and there that could be from the maker, but more likely are from a repair person. Let's go ahead and pull the back plate off. And there we are. Looks like Spock's brain. It's a very high art getting these spring cans open. go. So what's happened is that the inside coil of the spring has become bent right there. There's a hole in the end of it you know, where it should pick up this little uh, projection that comes off the hub so when you try to wind it it won't pick up the spring and twist it. So it should be fairly easy to fix. Very highly scientific part of the whole operation is getting this spring in and out. These are pretty much a challenge, but not too bad really. So hopefully just a couple little bends with the uh, needle nose pliers here and I should be able to get this straightened out. I kind of got the kink out of it. And so if I can just get it bent so that the hook can pick it up. So I've just got a couple pairs of needle nose pliers and I'm just putting a little bit of a bend on this thing. All right, I've got it kind of reshaped. I think that'll work. So off camera, I'll see if I can get this thing back in here. It's not gonna be pretty, but I can And do it. it looks to me like this thing is gonna wind. So I'm, I'm just amazed how well that worked out. And these springs are so clean. Uh, only thing I'm gonna do is just lubricate them. They don't even look like they really need to be cleaned and I'm not even gonna go into the time side because there doesn't seem to be anything wrong with that. So I'm ready to move the gears and the plates into the ultrasonic parts washer here. And we'll let them run in there for a half hour, maybe an hour. And this will give it its first good cleaning and then we'll come back and hand clean everything in detail. And we'll let that go for about an hour. Well, we've got the grease and gunk out of the movement and uh, came out of the parts washer looking pretty good. So I'll just go through all the gears and just get them cleaned up and make sure they don't have anything between the teeth. I like these little hors d'oeuvre skewers. I will go through all the pinions and make sure there is no grease balls in there. They're usually pretty clean after you degrease them, but every now and then you'll find something stuck in them. Got to hold each one up to the light and very carefully inspect it to make sure there's no debris between the teeth left. Especially when you're using the steel wool, you can leave little fibers that can prevent the clock from working. I've got uh, a lot of these little Scotch-Brite bits for my rotary tool, and they are just perfect for cleaning up all these little brass parts like this. Really leave a nice finish. Much better. They'll hardly be visible to the eye, but I like them to look nice. Now to clean the pivots, um, what I've been doing is uh, I just take a little piece of wood. This is a soft piece of uh, plywood. It's a, 
think it's a Baltic birch. I'll just uh, take the pin and just kind of set it there under my nail and just kind of spin it so that the wood burnishes it a little bit. And I think that's probably good enough, you know, to get any residue off. And so I'll do that on all of them. I know a lot of people will chuck these up in a lathe. I'm never comfortable doing that, especially with these really fragile little wheels. So this part of it consists of trying to get all the pivots inside their, their bushings. And I use this little tool and it's trial and error. You get two or three in and then one pops out and you go back and forth. See you in about 30 minutes. Well, the good news is I got it all back together. Bad news is I left the part out. Darn it. Oh. I got to start over. <laughs> well, after two attempts, I've got it back together and I'm at a point where I can test it now. So the springs are back and the gear trains are in. The verge is removed so I can freewheel the movement here and I've oiled the pivots. So first we'll look at the strike train here and we'll just put a little bit of uh, energy into that and let it run and see how it wants to do. So we'll trigger it. And that looks pretty good. Okay, so now we'll put a little bit of energy into the time side time train and can you see that pretty good skip mm -hmm. I can that is running really sweet that one wheel has a bit of a wobble to it but I didn't want to straighten that out because I was really afraid that I would bend the, the pin part of it and so normally that goes pretty slow uh, so it's I don't think it's an issue at all so we're just gonna leave it just like it is all right, we got it all back together here, and it seems like it wants to run. I put a couple of cranks on it, and so I think I'm going to take it over and put it in the case and see if it'll run before we get to the business of fixing the case up. This is an interesting clock because it's the pendulum hangs inside the case, which is not something I've ever seen before. I'm sure it's probably very common. So we're going to go ahead and slide the movement in here, and we'll get the... Uh, onto the pendulum and then let's see if she runs. going to have to set the beat. I can hear it ticking so we'll let it run for a while and we'll set the beat and see what we got. Well we got it running. The, the beat's not quite right. I'm going to have to fiddle with that a good deal to get the beat just exactly where it needs to be but I want to work the case first and then we'll come back to that later. But it is gonging. Need some adjustment there. This ends part one uh, of this clock restoration project. Um, part two uh, is going to include the woodworking and the refinishing of this case. Uh, there were several issues that um, I resolve in that video, including the creation of the top works and the finials. So when that's available, I'll make it a link in the description for this video, and I'll hope you'll click on that and uh, tell me what you think about that. So thanks so very much for watching, and have a wonderful day. St. Lucie Boulevard, the coolest road in all of Martin County.